Hello everyone. Uh, I hope I am audible. Yes, Karthik, you are audible. Thank you. Welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the community sync up call for Litmus Chaos. Uh, this is the second uh, community call of 2021. Um, and um, there are a lot of exciting updates. Um, we'll uh, have um, the following agenda today. Let me share my screen. I think um, Prithvi, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I hope that's okay. Yeah, so this is what we have in terms of agenda. We had a pretty successful event, the Chaos Carnival. That, uh, uh, was um, a chaos conference for different um, projects and tools and vendors and practitioners. We had lots of exciting uh, speakers come and present their uh, thoughts about chaos, how they view it, and what they're doing as part of chaos engineering efforts in their organizations. So as a community, we learned a lot. Um, so we'll just give a brief uh, update on this event, Litmus team was a part of the organizing committee for this conference. And we'll also look at um, how Litmus was presented. I think this community um, really deserves to know um, how Litmus is being used on the outside. So that's some good news for us as a community. So we'll just talk about um, the various use cases in which Litmus is being used very briefly. Um, and uh, we'll hand over to Somit who will talk about his recent efforts in Intuit around Litmus, uh, the creation of add-ons and um, how they're achieving GitOps with Chaos, which is uh, really interesting. We do have the regular release updates uh, as with every community sync up call. This was um, a shorter release by general Litmus standards. We had fewer changes as uh, most of us were busy um, participating in and celebrating Chaos Carnival, but still there were some uh, useful fixes that went in. So we'll talk about that. And um, there's also an announcement um, around uh, Litmus um, in the in terms of formation of a new org called Chaos Native. So we'll probably touch upon that. And um, most importantly, being a community sync up call, we'd like to speak to new members um, that have joined the community sync up today and um, introduce ourselves, talk about our interests in chaos and how they find Litmus or generally uh, talk about themselves. Um, and uh, it's a meet and greet session that we always have time for in the community sync up call. And then we have some roadmap items which we will uh, discuss if we are left with any time. There are some improvements based on the feedback that we've received from the community on Slack and previous uh, sync ups, which we will touch upon. So that's what we have for the agenda. In case there's uh, anything else you would like to talk about, anything you would like to add for the agenda or you'd like to speak, uh, please go ahead. Um, I'll share this link on chat. So please, please add yourself as the attendee and um, do add things into the agenda if you'd like to talk and we'll cover it if, uh, if we have time. So with that, I think I'll hand it over to Prithvi uh, to talk about the Chaos Carnival and uh, get us started. Would you like to share your screen, Prithvi? I can stop sharing. Sure, cut. sure. I guess everyone can see my screen. Yeah, so I'll I'll just be posting the link of Chaos Carnival in the chat as well, so that you can just uh, take a look at all the recordings uh, that that were available after the carnival ended. Wait a sec. Just... Uh, I, I'll be posting the link after after I explain everything. So, hey guys, as as you might know that we just winded up with Chaos Carnival. That was a two-day global event. 
which was all about chaos engineering and which included uh, 29 talks and 35 chaos experts from around the world who spoke about different aspects of chaos engineering. Now, the only reason I'm going to mention about chaos carnival was because of the talks it included and because of the coverage it had. So talking about the coverage, we, we had approximately 1300, 1400 registrations and approximately 500 to 600 people joined in from both the parts of the world that was one at air meet and again the youtube live stream was visible and mostly why why do i mention about chaos carnival because litmus saw a huge amount of attraction there and a lot of people also saw litmus coming up as a good or a, an amazing project in the chaos engineering world and with chaos native coming in which will be which we'll be talking about later on i i feel that chaos carnival will again come back next year and probably we can see anyone who's right there in the call right now talk about it and the main attraction was obviously the keynote by adrian cockcroft he he's an amazing guy and he's one of the stalwarts in the chaos engineering field and we also saw a couple of chaos boot camps which which took us to uh various aspects of AWS, Percona and Kafka, which, where we saw Vadim from Percona joining us. So this is the link that I have posted and you, you can find all the talks here. And feel free to let us know your reviews on the talks. There are various talks covering the psychology, the business application and how you can achieve real reliability in your workspace. So plus we had four to five talks covering Litmus specifically, and one of them was also covered by Sumit, who is also present in the call. He might give an overview of his talk and he, he can continue further. So I'll, I'll just like to give it to Karthik, who will explain more on the Litmus talks that happened at Chaos Carnival. And folks, we feel free to let us know more on how we can improve the event next year. Um, thanks, Prithvi, uh, for that intro. Um, we have a lot of new joinees today. Um, we have Anwar, I think we have um, Etienne, Graham, a lot of folks. Mike, um, would you like to introduce yourself? Just talk about um, how you got here and um, what your interests are. Well, I don't have much to say. I'm Graham. Um, I just uh, joined the channel today. Um, I learned about Litmus yesterday. So um, right now I'm just jumping in with both feet and getting a grip on things. Awesome. Um, and as for what I do, I'm a DevOps engineer. So it's sort of uh, DevOps SRE combined. That, that's great. Um, thanks for uh, joining the community today. Uh, looking forward to a lot of uh, interactions with you. And uh, we've got more folks. Um, hey, hi, uh, Anwar here. Uh, so uh, I'm one of the SRE uh, uh, from Intuit. I work particularly for uh, with the tax ecosystem. And uh, we are working closely with Sumit. Uh, me and Etienne are trying to like uh, uh, introduce the whole chaos uh like we do a lot of fmes and we do a lot of chaos engineering these are all ad hoc and we are trying to make it more uh pipeline oriented uh for every release for every services and this is where i think chaos would play a big part uh for the kubernetes and uh, uh in infrastructure that we have and looking forward to learn more down here so thank you thank you and welcome Anwar. My name is uh, Rahul. Uh, I work with Cisco. Uh, at the moment, we are building a contact center as a uh, service. So uh, in doing so, we are build, building a bunch of microservices uh, within that contact center. And uh, at the moment, I am exploring and evaluating various chaos engineering tools and uh, coming up uh, with some, some small POCs before, uh, I mean, finalizing one tool to go forward with. So uh, I joined the community today only. And uh, I hope to interact with some of you uh, while my evaluation go along and, and probably some of the issues, if at all, I will find I'll probably touch with, touch base with you guys. Great. Thanks, Rahul. Thanks for considering late us. Um, we had some great questions from you on Slack. I really appreciate that. Um, welcome to the community. 
Thank you. Hi. It's um, yeah, Mike. I've um, been looking at um, Kubernetes and. Hi, Mike. Welcome to the community. Great to have you. Um, I think we've got uh, some more folks. Uh, I think Pete, um, I think a lot of us are aware. I think we've heard him on the call. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Spoken to him on the call yet, but we've spoken a lot on Slack. <laughs> I guess we also have Etienne and Christian. Christian, we already know, is from Container Solutions. He can just give a quick heads up to the community and probably Etienne can also just start off with his introduction and then we can get on along with the call. Um, yeah, hi, uh, I'm Etienne and uh, yeah, I'm uh, from Intuit DevOps and working with Anwar. Uh, and as he said, we are trying to bring uh, Chaos and FME as a uh, GitOps model uh, into our ecosystem for different services uh, that we manage. Okay. Hi, yeah, I'm, I'm Christian. I'm a cloud native consultant um, and we've been using Litmus for about, I guess, almost a year now um, in production. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Christian, for uh, those wonderful contributions that you made um, for our release. And no worries. for uh, jumping in on Slack and uh, helping us with responding to users. I really appreciate. Um, thank you all. For joining today. I share my screen and um, very quickly go through um, some of the interesting talks around Litmus in the Chaos Carnival. Um, these, uh, I will share these slides on the meeting page uh, and you can go ahead and take a look at these talks. Apathy has already shared the links for the YouTube uh, recordings. Um, so these are hyperlinks. You can actually go to the individual uh, talks. Um, I'll just cover some very interesting use cases. Uh, I was also hosting the event and did not catch up on a lot of these uh, when they occurred, but uh, went back and took a look at them and uh, found, them to, found them to be really interesting. Um, starting with uh, the use case at Continuous Solutions, uh, Andreas, who's been working with us, and he's also working with Christian, um for a long time um on uh, the stress chaos and the network chaos experiments on openshift um described every interesting use case around how to inject network chaos between uh, different disparate applications and um, there is a downstream implementation of uh, the litmus go runner or the experiment uh, that they're using to achieve this and this talk was about how they tweaked the experiments, how they played around with TC and achieved the, uh, the desired goal. I'm not going to go into the detail of these uh, talks. I think that would be spoiling all the fun. So you can take a look at the recording and uh, enjoy the session. But this was about network chaos at scale in a production environment on OpenShift using Litmus. Um, so that, that's something that uh, was great to hear. The other session was from Jordi, uh, who is from Red Hat. And this is using a litmus for um, testing the OpenShift virtualization solution, which is essentially the enterprise version of the popular open source sandbox project KubeWord. And um, one of the things I particularly liked in this session was about uh, how the Red Hat team has been using the Litmus probes and had some good advocacy for contributing back into Litmus and um, how chaos results are helpful and how probe chaining is helpful. Sometimes um, fault injection is not the only thing associated with chaos. An experiment is an entire package. Uh, it is about uh, the, the preconditions or the health checks you might want to perform before you actually do the fault injection, the process of injection itself, and uh, checking for a predefined hypothesis. You might have started the experiment with some assumption of how the system, the platform, or an application would behave. 
and um, it's all about going back and checking the assumptions how much deviation there has been in our hypothesis have uh, we been proved right or we stand disproved uh, so probes are a good way to do that and uh, the probes infra has been enhanced by red hat considerably over the last few months in litmus and um, jordi talked about how you can probe chain the probes you can run different probes and uh, uh, get the output of one of the probes and feed it as inputs to the subsequent probes and um, run them in a conditional way and uh, really find out what's happening in your environment as you do the chaos checking downstream applications checking metrics executing custom commands verifying the state of different kubernetes resources custom custom and native resources as you do your experiment this was the um, uh, topic of this particular session and how um, the node level chaos is being covered so that was something interesting um, this was um, a session um, I, I think you might have um, noticed or you might have uh, attended previous sessions in the community sync up where Jürgen has talked about the litmus uh, integration with the captain control plane so captain is a cloud native um, application orchestration platform mainly used for the continuous delivery use cases and for uh, implementing what they call quality gates so you can determine some slos over the period of time uh, uh, the tests have taken place to see whether your application is resilient enough to be promoted to prod and um, captain has been using litmus um, uh, and has been recommending um, a litmus to be used as a chaos stage in the CD pipelines and um, as an effective way to strengthen the quality gate analysis. So this session was about how that can be achieved. So that's an interesting uh, use case. The next one was from Michael uh, from IEG, uh, Insurance Australia group, where they are running the chaos workflows uh, as part of their automated pipelines um, and this had a very interesting um, uh, way of actually setting up the tests or the experiments so they had eks they have um, eks clusters and they create additional nodes tainted um, uh, with you know um, keys that can be tolerated only by the litmus spots so they are also using node selectors to push the litmus uh, experiment parts to a particular node which acts as a transient temporary node on the staging cluster it runs all the experiments and they run multiple scenarios as a pipeline you can visualize different um, tests were used here as part of the pipeline before they end it and um, one of the interesting um, parts about this session was how they're using autoscaler uh, related tests, how they are ensuring um, their platform is uh, really behaving the way it should. So chaos is for both checking the applications as well as your actual cloud infra. So uh, some of the um, use cases of uh, IAG tended to test the infra part as well using some of the autoscale related experiments. So that was interesting to see. Um, the other talk was uh, from Raj and Shomu. And uh, this was about a new um, feature in the Litmus project called as uh, Event Driven Chaos. So we are, it has two parts, as you can see, as it is separated with the, the pink box and the blue box. So you, you must be knowing about the Litmus portal. Uh, a lot of us are aware about it. Um, so the portal has work, executes workflows, which it sources from Git. So this feature actually ensures that the portal uses the Git as DB and uh, can automatically sync changes made into a Git report on the portal and vice versa. And it also has another part where um, uh, applications can subscribe to a workflow and uh, trigger it. Uh, trigger a chaos workflow in, or an experiment whenever there are certain changes on your application and you can set up a policy um, a set of whitelisted events against which you can trigger the chaos so uh, that's something that uh, is coming up newly and this was uh, 
review so to say yeah, during the uh, uh, this, this session um, another session was with ramiro talking about how you can use litmus for dev test on the octico platform and um, he uh, advocated use of simple scripts um, that will help you to run a set of uh, experiments uh, you just need to do a one click operation from octito and it will result in a lot of tests getting executed on your application and give you feedback before your build goes through the CI process. Something that you do even before CI. So Kiosk is becoming ubiquitous nowadays, being executed in various stages. Dev test is where it's probably the leftmost uh, point in your um, app development spectrum. So this was very interesting and a different talk. And we had Vibhav uh, uh, and Summer from Orange talking about how they're using Litmus in a telco environment. Uh, they have an OpenStack based uh, cloud um, platform um, uh, on which they are running Kubernetes clusters. OpenStack by itself is made up of several services and prone to chaos. And um, they are actually using a lot of probes, custom probes that they are writing um, to test uh, telco specific um, SLOs and telco specific exit checks as part of their um, uh, usage. So these were the talks. Um, do go ahead and check them out. They're all very interesting and very insightful. Um, we are certainly motivated as a litmus community in all the um, different scenarios and different ways in which it's being used. Um, so that's all I had. I just want to do a very quick overview of how litmus is being used uh, and something we learned during chaos carnival with that i'll probably stop sharing um i'd like to hand it over to sumit uh, for integrations for updates on the sig uh, integration and um on what's cooking around litmus and in, into it over to you sumit sure uh Karthik. Uh, am i audible yeah yeah okay So uh, we were able to see that. So a quick update, I think Chaos Carnival was good. I'm hoping that everyone has enjoyed and there are a lot of uh, good insightful talk uh, from various uh, speaker. Even I got a chance to speak about the future state for Chaos and everything looks very promising. Now coming back to the Chaos as well as the Litmus work. So one of the biggest challenge here, what I, I see that like uh, in our case, uh, is that we have many clusters. Now, one of the traditional way of using uh, Litmus is that you go and install that on a specific cluster uh, using YAML. But think about that when you have not one cluster, you have many clusters. In our scenario, we have more than 250 clusters. It become very, very challenging. So what we have started doing is that we started creating a concept called add-on. Add-on is the reusable component you can attach to any cluster. And what it will do is that it will do the same setup what you have in, a, in a, any cluster. And that way it will help you to get the adoption fast, self-service fast, uh, as well as the automation fast. So this work is very, very uh, much aligned with the GitOps. And today uh, with me, uh, Anwar and Atin from uh, uh, CG team uh, from the Intuit, they are actually the recipient of this and they are actually using. So the core concept behind using uh, this GitOps based model, uh, by the way, we are using this uh, another plugin called uh, uh, Add-on Manager. This is the project which is uh, part of an open source project, which actually help you how you can go and create the add-on for this. Okay, So this is one of the cluster uh, I have. And as part of this cluster, I will quickly talk about that when you go and set up the add-on, what you will get out of that. So add-on, you will get one thing, which is uh, your operator. So you definitely need a placeholder for the operator. So this is the place where we are keeping the operator. And then you need a placeholder where you can go and you can execute certain experiments. So this is the place which is we are keeping 
which will help you to keep your experiment. Now in this namespace, we have to create those chaos experiment. So if you see that we have persisted few of the experiment here. Now you have litmus operator there, you have add on there, you really need to know that where the CRD is an API resource. So the API resources as well as the CRD has been set up on this specific cluster. So in NetNet to run a litmus, what you need, you need only these things operator need to be there. And we do have the same setup for uh, uh, the Argo because we rely on the Argo. So on the same cluster, we do have the Argo also being set up in, in a similar way. And with that, you have workflow there, you have operator there, you have engine experiment, and what all you need is just the execution. Um, so that's uh, one of the other thing and we will uh, give back to the community uh, soon after uh, validating that. And uh, there is a one more, up, two more update uh, are there. One of the uh, update is uh, that uh, in our framework uh, with the Litmus Python uh, using Chaos Toolkit, we found a issue which uh, is uh, helping, which is causing a issue related to not able to parse the pod name correctly. So Anwar has put a fix on a Chaos Toolkit Kubernetes and Anwar, I will give you more a chance to speak more on that. And then the similar way, there was another uh, request pending from a while where we want to customize the health check endpoint. So Atten has actually provided that fix. So these were the other two fixes which uh, has been uh, given. I would uh, like if uh, Anwar or Atten, if you want to quickly talk about these things, um, if you have, uh, if you can. Yeah, Anwar? Sure. Yes, yeah. I can go ahead. Uh, you can uh, keep sharing it, I think. Sure. Uh, like if you go, uh, go back, uh, so uh, what we kind of found, uh, like the fix was pretty straightforward as you can see, uh, like uh, the line number 204 uh, where uh, like basically what we were doing in, uh, initially was that like we were trying to map and find all the pods uh, from a particular uh, de deployment uh, manifest or a deployment object and then map it to the name. So for most cases like the name, uh, the level name and the uh, and the actual uh, and the actual name of the manifest are always almost similar. But then for us like for our vendor, uh, our vendor uh, manifest and then how we have our pipeline and that may not be really true for all the use cases. So what we found out was that uh, like we were trying to search, uh, search the name uh, and then match it with a different source of truth. So basically for that case, we went ahead, added the, uh, added the fix, which would say, see that, hey, if, if this particular name pattern is inside this string instead of like uh, where right now it was just uh, only, it, has to be the prefix of the string and we change the behavior uh we uh i'm happy that this code is uh, barge now and we uh, we will be able to like uh you uh, start using the latest build uh, Thanks, the, yep. awesome. yeah so just to summarize what uh, there is a bug in the toolkit code so we identify that because 99 percent most of the time is a prefix based uh, pod creation but we have a use case where we are putting these values inside and this is the place where it is failing so thanks uh anwar for contributing not only to the chaos toolkit but again later point of time doing to the litmus uh, python also i think you want to talk about that the fix you provided for uh, the health check endpoint yeah, sure. So it's just a small fix uh, improvement, we can say, is uh, right now the JSON file uh, with the definition of the experiment. They so were um, specifying a health check for the pod, uh, which had a hard-coded value uh, of uh, slash health slash full. Um, so for more flexibility, uh, since not all services or not all teams, you know, will have the same health check. Um, we are going to pass it as a parameter and the parameter will have the value, the default value of slash health slash full, uh, but at least then people can, will be able to uh, customize that uh, if they need to. 
uh, in order to, um, you know, as a, as a value for the, uh, the uh, health check uh, for their services. <clears throat> yep, that, that's good. Uh, so now, as, as you see that, like, uh, this is the change which uh, Atin has made. This is a very hard, a specific hard-coded value. We expose this through a variable in our framework. This framework has a custom uh, resource defined. So this become like any of the other parameter what we have, we are passing as part of uh, the, mm, the environment variable. And then those environment variable has been being rightly mapped. So think about that. Uh, this is uh, one very important thing, but given that whole chaos toolkit framework, litmus operator and the custom resources are uh, being there, it become very easy. So let me just quickly talk about that. So here, if you could see that this is the label name, this is the app endpoint. Here, there is no health endpoint, if you could see that, right? So the work which he has done, which is being exposed, this service helpful, right? You could see that this will be, be used as one of the custom endpoint. And then you can have your execution to be executed and passed, or you can override that uh, value. By default, the value is being there for uh, uh, default helpful. So this is, uh, I think, uh, two of the Intuit team also were looking for that. And uh, most of our teams might not have a helpful as a, a definite health uh, point. Uh, just to give some context behind this helpful, Kubernetes, uh, anytime the pod will come, there is a concept of uh, ensuring that pod is up. So they need a health check endpoint. And that health check endpoint will ensure that when pod will come up, it will uh, go and it will make a call and then it can uh, ensure that pod is up. So it will give a signal and then the pod ready state will come. The same work can go uh, very interesting when we are using the readiness gate. If it's behind the gate, behind the LB, it will go and make a call. So this is really, really very essential thing. And every application go and implement their health check uh, based on uh, their need. So thanks, uh, I think, thanks uh, Anwar for <coughs> contributing to this work. Thank you. Over to you, Ajesh or uh, Karthik or Prithvi. Cool. Um, thanks, uh, Sumit. I think um, with that, we have some um, uh, discussion on 1.3 release updates. Um, is there anything else uh, folks would want to discuss before we go there? Oh, all right. So let me share my screen. Uh, very briefly, um, I'll talk about the 1.13 release. Um, so we released it on 15th as uh, usual and um, as part of this update i'll also talk about the improvements we've made on the observability front in litmus um, we have some folks here on the call especially pete um, for example who has been trying uh, to set up the monitoring and um, there were some discussions that we had recently so i just thought um, we will talk about it as um, this is uh, a new improvement and um, something that we are looking to continuously improve upon. And uh, yeah, so let me go to the release page. So 1.13 was um, a release with uh, lesser content compared to some of the earlier releases, but there's some useful stuff. The Redmus portal has moved to beta two phase. Um, as you all are aware, we are creating uh, the litmus portal, uh, litmus portal is being um, uh, improved in several beta releases. Um, so we had the alpha phase and then we've now entered beta and 
this is beta 2. This has the ability to disable workflow schedules and um, support for configuration of private Git repositories. And uh, you can do um, the CRUD operations on the embedded Chaos Hub or My Hub. When I say that, it means you can add, delete, modify, all that kind of stuff on the My Hubs. And um, it also improves the Chaos visualization. We had some uh, polish applied to the existing functionality on the portal. Um, I do have, I think, a portal uh, which I have open so there's some improvements that we've made uh, in terms of the workflow visualization and um, also with respect to the log log format that you, you you can get this is not available the particular pod and hence you'll see that there's no particular pod there's no log here but um, in case of um, the existing pods where you have the uh, workflow pods and the experiment pods still alive on your cluster, you will see logs formatted better. Some improvement that we've made. Um, you can get new hubs. Um, you can actually delete them. You can modify them. There's also support for uh, private uh, chaos hubs that you can add in the 1.13 release. The one that I have here is 1.12. Just using this for illustration uh, purposes. Um, so this is in beta 2 and um, we had some enhancements made into the CRDs, the API for chaos experiment made by contributed by Christian. Um, this is for the host path volumes. Um, we were by default considering it as type file because we were uh, mostly mounting the socket file but Technically, it is supposed to be socket and uh, the support uh, for the uh, types um, has been made stricter in newer OpenShift versions and uh, we needed a change to accept new types. So that change has gone in. Um, one of the requests that we got from the community over a period of time was for multiple workloads to be annotated. So um, you might all be aware that Litmus uh, has um, ability to target applications um, as workloads. That is, does not target only pods directly, but you can actually get it to filter workloads like deployments and stateful sets, daemon sets, argo rollouts. So workload is a definition of um, the, the Kubernetes has recently uh, defined the term workload as parent resources that are managing other pods. So Litmus can actually filter um, chaos targets at the workload level. And uh, we are doing that via annotations and labels. There was a limitation that you can annotate only one workload amongst a set of workloads sharing the same label. Um, now that restriction has been lifted. You can actually annotate multiple workloads and uh, you can randomize chaos injection across children pods of all those parent workloads. So that's an uh, enhancement um, we've made. The HTTP Pro, we found a lot of views like I also mentioned during the chaos carnival updates. A lot of folks are using it as part of um, per experiment um, hypothesis uh, validation. And um, in one of the cases, especially for Orange, they are running some scripts and um, they are actually making an API call to a, a server, which uh, a post request essentially, uh, which is actually triggering off some operations and uh, explaining the state of the environment um, as part of the validation. So we only supported uh, get calls. Uh, we recently added uh, support for um, skipping certificate checks. Now we've also added the post operations, some incremental enhancements being made to the probes. We've also simplified um, the node resource chaos experiments. By this, I'm talking about the node memory hog and node CPU hog experiments, specifically for um, Node memory hub, we are accepting the resources in units 
in maybe bytes along with uh, relative percentage values earlier only the percentage was supported so this gives uh, an easier option for uh, people to determine or specify how much uh, resource scales they want and um, we've also made the termination mode configurable for container kill so container kill has been a strange experiment so to say it's a, it, it's a little contentious there are some folks who uh, really uh, love this experiment and it fits their use case very well in some other cases uh, they don't see this as a valid kubernetes scenario because they generally get um, the termination signals uh, in a very moderated way um, generally don't do docker kills you get termination signals but nevertheless um, this experiment has been enhanced with uh, the type of uh, termination that you can effect you can do sick kill you can do sick terms and etc whatever uh, is supported uh, by docker um, so that's an enhancement that we've made for some of the folks in the community um, we will look forward to more feedback around this um, we also added more details to experiment logs so as you do the experiment uh, if you are someone who is um, uh, looking keenly at the logs uh, and um, pushing it to uh, elastic search and you're using some filters um, to do some intelligent stuff then uh, you would really like to know what are the applications that are getting targeted both the parents as well as the pods um, and um, when they are being targeted um, all that information was um, uh, was dispersed uh, it had it was available in some experiments it wasn't uh, available in a few others so we've made that consistent all the experiments now um, will have logs around uh, what are the applications workloads that are being targeted and what are the parts being targeted depending upon whether you have your annotation check uh, true or false uh, so improvements to logs the disk fill chaos experiment has been um, improved um, we did have a helper pod there but we were doing a lot of exec calls uh, resulting in more um, um, complicated approach and resource utilization we've improved that um, to work uh, similar to the other experiments where the helper pods have the right entry points within themselves to go ahead and do the uh, dd chaos against ephemeral storage that's the container file systems and your empty dar volumes to eat up um, ephemeral storage so there's been some improvement in the core logic of the disk fill uh, experiment apart from that we had some um, interesting um, uh, tests getting added thanks to Odit for all his uh, constant efforts in improving the E2E suite. Uh, you can take a look at the E2E dashboard that's um, litmuschaos.github.io slash litmus hyphen um, E2E. You can uh, track the build status there and we are uh, constantly trying to improve that interface, give out more real-time info uh, as we improve our E2E infrastructure for Litmus. There were some um, bug fixes that we made. Um, one of the fix was, and this is especially true when the same experiment is being carried out in the same namespace, but against different applications. So we had cases where the same experiment was being done um, with uh, multi replica targets. That is, let's say you have an application with three replicas, you're doing chaos against more than one, let's say two out of the three, and you're doing this for different app instances. Um, so these helper pods that were being launched for chaos uh, were being filtered by a common uh, label and that resulted in giving um, an incorrect status of the chaos injection and revert to experiments. Uh, so experiment one was actually getting the helper status of experiment two because we were using common labels that has been fixed uh, to uh, use some um, labels with instance IDs, so it can be differentiated. And uh, there have been some improvements about um, the chaos result statuses and verdicts, especially in case of aborts. Um, uh, let's say you are doing aborts and doing reruns. Uh, there were a few missing events uh, for some experiments, the Kafka and Cassandra QS experiments, which we've identified and fixed. Um, this was an interesting one. Um, 
we were actually using the TC rules to inject network chaos on uh, the network namespaces of target containers for our uh, network uh, suite, the chaos suite. And um, in cases where uh, you're doing um, uh, a bots um, without giving much time for the bot to actually take place, and uh, you've removed the uh, helpers beforehand, either intentionally or it was because of some eviction on the cluster. Some of the chaos was still persisting on those uh, containers, which is what we were calling as residual TC rules and subsequent iterations of uh, chaos was failing. Um, so we've changed the TC command there to do um, a replace instead of add for the rule so that uh, you don't fail and you are successful in re-injecting the chaos. Uh, there is some more information around how we are improving this uh, general about flow and how we are tackling um, uh, chaos rollbacks. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. And there have been some log fixes and uh, there are some, there continue to be some known issues and limitations around the stress chaos um, and um, also around um, the revert of chaos that I just talked about. The um, forthcoming items for 1.13.x patch releases and 1.14 revolve around how we can do guaranteed um, reverts uh, under any circumstance, you will not have residual chaos processes running on your applications, application containers. Um, they will be reverted. We are um, basically achieving this via a, a twofold uh, approach. Um, we have, um, uh, we are going to allow the um, helper pods to terminate with some grace period and not immediately remove them by force, which is what is being done. So we, we give time for the chaos operations to actually succeed. And we'll also be uh, monitoring each helper for injection and revert. And uh, the status will be maintained in the chaos result. And in case a helper is removed without the revert actually being um, successful, the experiment is actually going to retry it, ensure that the rollback occurs as part of the experiment flow. So um, there have been some interesting implementations around um, revert and retries, um, which uh, Christian and Andreas have worked in the past. Some of this is taking inspiration from that and uh, also some more feedback from the community. So this is already available on the master and will be making its way into 1.13.1 patch, which will be out in a week. Um, we're also handling, trying to handle scale uh, cases where let's say 20, 30 replicas are being injected with chaos at once. Uh, so there are some interesting um, connotations of that kind of a use case. Um, the experiments use a lot of uh, KHS API, uh, attempts to update the chaos results or generate events. Uh, all are in the end um, API calls to the KHS Cube API server. And um, if you're doing a lot of them at once, um, uh, you might probably be throttled if you're already doing a lot of other operations on your cluster some best practices around this and some fixes in the core to enable this is also being made as we speak and that's been uh, that's been a very interesting exercise if probably we could speak more about it in our next community call and um, as you all know we are building towards 2.0 where um, our documentation is going to see a major shift we will be doing um, chaos in a portal driven way there will be well formed portal apis which will allow you to do chaos integrations for cicd so that work is going on incrementally. And as we do several beta releases on the 2.0, uh, starting uh, next week, uh, we, we will be having the documentation improved as well. So um, a lot of contributors uh, have supported us during this release and uh, releases that have gone um, through in the, uh, in the past. Uh, we have a lot of them here, Christian, uh, Pete, um, Sumit, um, and a lot of other folks. Um, thanks for all your contributions in terms of great questions, feedback, um, issues, PRs, reviews, etc. So thank you uh, very much. Uh, I think this was all about 1.13 updates. Um, if there are any questions, I can take them, or I can very quickly show some. This is. Um, 
uh, one of my um, uh, favorite things about litmus in recent times the chaos interleaving this is essentially an annotation as you can see it's coming out from litmus um, matrix uh, you can see that it has the chaos exporter has an improved set of metrics we were dependent upon the event router and we used to convert chaos events into metrics um, and that had its own issues um, event router didn't have a very good filtering mechanism so our tsdb would get filled very fast and it had other um, implications as well the events on the kubernetes clusters by default don't last beyond an hour uh, so the metrics would be lost so instead we found a better better method we are storing state of the chaos experiment runs within the result CR and uh, parsing that to create some useful metrics. And you can use the awaited experiments to uh, create annotations uh, of the kind that you can see. Um, you can see here, uh, I think it's here. There's some issue probably with my network. Yeah, you can see the annotations added here right and uh, you can with that you can actually get interleave dashboards when they talk about interleaving i'm saying you have application behavior which you can uh, find out during the period of chaos so you can have you can see messages that's sort of dipped uh, you can see a lot of under replicated partitions during chaos uh, you can see the broker count changing this is for a kafka experiment so um, a lot of folks in the community are finding this useful we are finding it useful uh, for our own applications as well um, so do try out the new litmus uh, chaos um, exporter um, it's i think uh, reasonably stable now and more metrics will be added as we go ahead so that's uh, one thing i just wanted to cover and um, intimate the uh, community about that's the um, chaos metrics improvement um, very briefly i'll probably um, I think let Ajesh or someone introduce uh, chaos and native. Ajesh, do you want to talk about this? Uh, hi all. Uh, uh, am I audible? Yes, Ajesh. Okay. Uh, you might have seen the PR news uh, about chaos native. So uh, the reason why uh, Maya wanted to spin off uh, as chaos native is to support uh, two different projects. So my data wanted to uh, focus only on the storage part. So that's how the open EBS will go over there. And the chaos native is a company which is uh, to focus on litmus project. So uh, the chaos native will be the, it's like, will try to accelerate uh, litmus development and will have full support on uh, the litmus project. All right. Yeah, I think uh, we just uh, maybe like uh, uh, share. would like to take any questions. Uh, maybe yeah. or me can answer the same. Um, I think as far as the community is concerned, uh, this probably is positive news as um, there'll be more effort or probably um, more folks focused on litmus and making it better. So yeah, uh, welcome any questions or feedback on the releases or um, the announcement or anything, any questions we can take. All right, um, I think we are on time. We have uh, a couple of minutes left for the call. Um, I did see some um, questions on the Slack channel. Um, Rahul, would you, would you like to talk about some of your questions? I know I responded, some of us have responded on uh, Slack. Were there any questions you had around Litmus, um, in terms of its sensibility, would you like to describe your use case a little bit? What are you trying to focus on your evaluation, et cetera, so we can help you? Yeah, so uh, we have some of the scenarios right now in mind. So uh, certainly, right, some of the categories what we have in mind are uh, 
uh, network specific failures. So for that, I see a good number of uh, experiments already available on the uh, Kios Hub. Uh, there is one category which is uh, 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 issues related to the JVM specific area, right? So I right. I don't yeah I don't find anything over there. So probably we have to write our custom experiments around it. So that was one area, and then uh, at, at at the same time, whatever experiments we are going to run. So we do have some requirement of uh, 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 adding some probes and probably some probe chaining also, right? So probes like SATP probe or CMD probe where we want to have something. Uh, as a Python script and probably running as CMD in a cell script, right? So those kind of things we right now we are thinking. So we wanted to understand when, let's say uh, we have a probe, let's say health check probe, for example, just for a basic example, when I'm running my experiment, I probably do a SCP probe just to check how's the health of the application. And then uh, the experiment starts and then uh, we kind of uh, uh, fire number of requests and we want to see like how many requests were actually entertained and, and how many were simply uh, uh, basically fell flat right so uh, yeah. when when the experiment is over and then we probably wanted to uh, get some report out of uh, that particular chaos where we can uh, uh, visualize how uh, those uh, requests right which which ran as part of the pro are uh, basically went and and if we can see at high level in some uh, pictorial graph right so those kind of things i was thinking right do we have those options or how do we go about it yeah, that's a great um, uh, suggestion and a requirement. Uh, so one of the things um, that we're doing with the HTTP probe is uh, we're enhancing it um, uh, every release. The chaos result is a good place for us to enhance the schema for individual probes. Um, as uh, you might notice, uh, let me just share the schema for that on the chaos operator. Right. So you have the chaos engine, uh, which is defining all the individual probes. As far as the HTTP probe goes, um, there are some interesting inputs that you, you can provide. And mm -hmm. uh, similarly, um, the chaos result, which is holding the information of the probes, the status of the probes rather, whether they succeeded or no, can be enhanced mm -hmm. to hold information specific to a probe type. Right now, the probe information is um, uh, it is very simple whether it is successful or no, and what is the success percentage. Just mm -hmm. the way the chaos engine holds a schema that gives you an option to specify a uh, lot of information related to a particular probe. The status of the probes can also be enhanced. We can have a unique um, schema for each probe type, which holds information like that: how many hits, misses, what is the um, uh, different statistics around uh, HTTP calls that you made. And um, that information can be used to generate some useful reports out of. Uh, there's no UI representation as of today from the, from the portal, um, no visualization of this information today, though the experiment uh, success or failure and other metadata that you can see in the result is stored on the MongoDB of mm -hmm. the portal. Um, but this is definitely something that's going to be useful and uh, probably is a good candidate for some third party integrations within the litmus portal right. uh, for visualization. So, take... Yeah. Can, can, can I come in? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So, Rahul, uh, I would be a bit interested about your JVM use case. What is, can you talk a little bit about the JVM use case? So uh, it's let's say the JVM. I mean, uh, so we our applications are JVM specific microservices. What we are building, right? So right. we wanted to see, let's say, uh, within that JVM, not the uh, container, right? I am saying specific JVM. Let's say uh, the memory went out of memory, right? right? So maybe that one of the basic scenario, right? So if let's say that happens, not at the container level or the pod level, I am saying it happens at the JVM level. So what application will do in that case? What will be the behavior? Oh, so, but this is, uh, okay, so you are saying that like how you can uh, create uh, the JVM specific memory or how you can increase the JVM memory. Is that? No, uh, I mean, no, no. I mean a chaos experiment, which doesn't attack the pod or container, but it attacks the application running inside that container at JVM level. Got it. 
So there is one small experiment is there for microservice scale uh, about the JVM. I think uh, as a litmus Python, we have that. Uh, we can give you detail, but uh, going into the JVM and uh, creating uh, this kind of scenario is a, a good good requirement. Uh, I don't think uh, we have anything uh, being focused on that. So I think it would be nice if you have create an issue. Uh, coming back to the second question, which I think Karthik explained a bit. Uh, one of the other things we had also solved that via the, so the, the chaos experiments are more about the stateful experiments. You know that, right? Like you do that mm -hmm. and uh, behind the scene, you wanted to do something stateless where you keep polling. Uh, of your health and uh, I think litmus providing that uh, mechanism to you can do that uh, one of the framework which we brought to the litmus litmus python uh, which is using chaos toolkit has this kind of uh, facility also available but right. net, you are trying to converging stateless and stateful in a one shot which become little challenging so you probably need uh, another integration so we did perf performance test as well as the chaos test in tandem uh, so they go side by side before running experiment of a chaos you started running the <coughs> performance Correct. test that you Correct. use to go and measure that so that is something right. which we have shared uh, and that is available uh, if you wanted to try it out and you can ping me uh, or put it in the community channel i can uh, share more information i think one of the community i have shared that information how we are able to do that Okay. Okay. One question I do have, uh, uh, Sumit. So you mentioned uh, the toolkit and as well as uh, uh, the the litmus. So I'm not sure. I mean, are you using both the tools while you are uh, yeah. uh, doing the so, experiment? How is the, your setup? So the, the toolkit is a framework. Right. The litmus is the one who is using that framework. So litmus has a, a concept called bring your own framework, right? Uh, right. So as part of that. We build many scenarios uh, on a chaos toolkit. And uh, what we have done is that we took goodies of a chaos toolkit and bring it to the litmus. So now litmus is able to execute or orchestrate all okay. those scenarios, all those experiments uh, in a manner uh, to do that. And chaos toolkit, why we use? Because chaos toolkit is very open, very open ended. Right. That means that you can bring any extension, any framework also. So it become like a, you have open, open, like you can bring any of the extension, any of the integration, and then you can bring this in a framework and then that framework, you can bring it to the litmus. So it is a lot more openness and a lot more contribution based on your requirement. You will be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good clarification, but I, I do have one more small follow-up question. So when yeah. we say that uh, a toolkit provides a lot of flexibility, it is, it is more open and so many other things. So that's why we are doing, uh, 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 I mean, maybe the lower part of it and then bringing it to the litmus and then executing it. So then the question what I have is when we have so many things in toolkit, why are we bringing it in, bring that into the litmus? What extra benefit we are getting it by bringing, bringing that in, in litmus and executing within litmus? Okay. I can probably take that question and I think Sumit can jump in. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Patrick. Yes. Uh, so Rahul, uh, a couple of things. Uh, so when we started out Litmus, uh, we started it as a project, which is both an orchestration framework as well as something that has native experiments, which you can use. Mm -hmm. Chaos Toolkit, on the other hand, is um, has a well-structured API to create an experiment. So people go ahead and create it and use, but Litmus comes with um, a Chaos Hub where you can pick experiments that are uh, written as per a Litmus paradigm and right. uh, by Called, you can run these, but in case you have preferences or you have been using other tools from prior, for example, in Sumit's case, um, I think Intuit was using Chaos Toolkit before this, right? right. And uh, they needed a method to make it more cloud native. Chaos Toolkit experiment definitions were good, and they had some existing experiments uh, written for uh, mm -hmm. for deletes, etc. But they wanted okay. to run it as custom resources and they wanted to run it as one-time jobs, right? Not as a uh, server that's always running. Uh, so uh, that was achieved with Litmus. So Litmus instantly has a concept called bring your own chaos, BYOC, that's what Sumit referred to. So in case you're running other tools, 
you can get that orchestrated by litmus for some benefits um, you, you can refer to this uh, slide deck which i've mentioned in the slack answer about what these benefits are so what you need to do is just need to containerize your tool in their case they containerized chaos toolkit uh, created a cr of litmus which has uh, litmus uh, has toolkit as the chaos injection mechanism and mm -hmm. uh, they were able to run that and um, there are some benefits of doing that um, you you can have about capabilities you can uh, do blast radius control uh, at a upper workload level okay uh, some metrics and um, you will also be able to um, tune your experiments in a better way because it's all defined as a cr and when they made a shift to a chaos i mean cloud native approach of doing chaos and wanted to reuse existing experiments uh, they found uh, litmus as a convenient orchestrator um, uh, but if in case your chaos requirements are already met um, in the experiments that are available here you could give them a shot and then you could choose the injection tool of your choice right okay you choose it as an orchestrator or you can choose to run experiments also along with it both projects like Sumit mentioned have a lot of contributions and a lot of good community around them um, okay so that that's a, that's a design choice as you build your uh, chaos framework so one of the things um, about um, the um, JVM chaos I just probably will touch upon that and let Sumit come in is um, there is an experiment SDK within Litmus. Um, let me just very briefly show that. Let me hide this first. It's basically meeting controls is causing a problem. Right. So there is a Litmus SDK essentially a binary which will help you to bootstrap an experiment. And this is going to help you create a native Litmus experiment uh, in case mm -hmm. you do that. So you need to fill out an attributes.yaml file. Uh, which has some metadata of how you want to run your experiment, what, what you want to run your experiment about, uh, mm -hmm. information about uh, what app it is targeted against, who is maintaining it and things like that, and what permissions you need to run them. And then Litmus will actually generate all the uh, files that are necessary. The, the uh, .go scaffold links is created along with all the CR templates right uh, you have all the packages that are uh, generated along with the uh, crs as well yeah this is the cr you will have a cr template created as well the way these experiments are bootstrapped is uh, you will have an option to specify a chaos inject command and a chaos kill command from outside as an environment variable so it's not going to uh, do, I'm just taking the example of a CPU hog because this is an experiment that uses this model, but even otherwise, when you scaffold that uh, bootstrap the experiment using the SDK, mm -hmm. you end up uh, an experiment that can do any command that you specify as part of this CLV and um, you, it is going to get killed as part of this command after the you know chaos duration and you can apply the same ramp time and all that other uh, regular litmus attributes to it. So in case of JVM chaos, it's probably uh, in case the applications against which you're going to do this experiment, if mm -hmm. those applications contain the right binaries inside them or scripts inside them, or uh, you know, you, if you have some custom CLI inside the app that you're targeting, which you can utilize to invoke uh, JVM chaos, then you can do that using this experiment, the, the standard experiment that's bootstrapped by Litmus will give you um, an option to specify the chaos command itself using these environment variables. It's probably okay. a preview approach. It's probably not the way you want your end chaos to work, right? It's more of um, okay. uh, a trial. So you can use this to try out your application uh, chaos. And eventually, you can create an app-specific chaos experiment. So you can see here all the experiments that the Intuit team and uh, my data team and uh, Red Hat and the rest of the folks have contributed. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also going to see some application specific chaos experiment, let's say Kafka, right? So this yeah. experiment is going to do a broker pod failure. Um, it's going to kill a leader partition 
I'm sorry, a leader uh, broker and uh, check whether your message stream is all right. And yeah, these yeah. are native checks that have been burned in into the experiment. So you can create another category for JVM kiosks very similar to this for your application. And um, yeah. if you think that's something that is useful for others, you can contribute back to the hub or you can maintain a private hub which you can uh, connect in your Litmus portal via the My Hub and use those experiments in your workflows. So uh, this is uh, one approach towards JVM kiosk, um, but I really liked your um, um, feedback on the HTTP Pro, um, right? You, you you can actually create an issue um, um, Rahul, on um, both these requirements that you just mentioned, JVM kiosk as well as this and mm -hmm. uh, we'll be happy to you know, address that as regards uh, chaos toolkit uh, which sumit was um, uh, mentioning i mm -hmm. think there are some experiment categories which are very good uh, with chaos toolkit so, um, there is a chaos toolkit istio um, experiment category in case you're using service meshes which sumit can yeah, yeah we're using we're using istio yeah 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 That's, Something that we are looking at adding into Litmus as well in a native way. So one of the um, advantages of doing that is uh, all the abort capabilities and events generated, Kubernetes events generated around chaos and um, what you can use for metrics generation uh, is probably will be, a, will be simpler, but uh, you could use probes. Uh, there is there is issue created by Sumit around how you can use Litmus probes for chaos toolkit experiments as well. So there is some integration work going around around that. So Litmus aims to be both you know, an injection. It's not just a chaos injector, but it's probably attempting to be an end-to-end -end platform um, which can run other experiments as well. I mean, other tools as well. We are also using Pumba as an optional chaos lib in case you're interested and you have tried that tool earlier. Um, but that's optional. Uh, each of these experiments you might notice has um, uh, for example, you take network loss, you, you have um, the lib mentioned inside it. Um, Correct. Yes. So you can choose the different lib. Uh, there's a Pumba lib, for example, that you can choose to run, if not Litmus, if you're comfortable using that. Yeah. So that's generally uh, something I wanted to share. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 This will yeah, be right, actually. Yeah, Karthik, I, I, I'll just give one statement. I think uh, today, I think we demoed also that uh, we do have our own specific requirement. Uh, today, you see that Anwar mentioned that we need a change in the framework. We quickly make the change in the framework and then we are able to use without making a, a modification. So that is the flexibility we have. And we, we've been working on this from almost last two, three years. So think about that all the use cases all the scenarios, how much we have already contributed and how much we are using. So moving completely new uh, again was a little challenge. And that's the reason we brought this uh, whole concept because the openness of Litmus is actually helping us and uh, uh, um, moving in the right direction. Hmm. Okay. Okay. That this helps actually uh, all this information, what you both have provided. Thank you so much. No problem. Bye. All right. Um, we can take any more questions. Uh, we, have, uh, we have over the time. Um, please feel free to post your questions on uh, Slack. Um, and uh, thanks for joining in and uh, staying late and participating in today's discussions. Uh, we'll sync up in the next month and um, stay tuned for the batch releases that are. Uh, going to be released over the next month. Um, feel free to create issues on the Litmus repo. Uh, we will address them as early as we can. Thanks, uh, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.